Hi everyone and welcome back to Kochi TV. Um, I'm going to take a little different approach with this video as opposed to doing just a, a science breakdown of something um, in terms of race, your, your aerobic system or something like that. I'm going to actually have us break down a, a race here today. Um, and in this race we're going to look at um, a kid who we had who just graduated from Morton High School. His name is Trey Rivers and this is going to be his mile regional championship that we're going to be looking at here today. I am Kyla Giacono. I'm the head boys cross country and track coach at Wharton High School in Tampa, Florida, and I have been for the last six years. If you want to take a look at my credentials, they're there on the screen. So let's just talk a little bit about the mile first before we look at the video itself, some of the metrics about the race so we have an idea of what we're looking at here. So first up here, the predictor of who's going to win the mile is going to be a combination of who has the best VO2 max over their running economy or who's the most economical in terms of their calories and energy expenditure. The person who has both of these things together as a close one-to-one -one ratio is going to win 95.5% of the time. VO2 max, which is the best indicator of who's going to win a two-mile or a 5 k 91% if you look at it alone, and then running economy, which is the best indicator of who's going to win, say, uh, a 10K is 88.94. So whoever wins the mile most of the time is going to be a combination of these two, and that speaks to the fact that a lot happens in the mile that you can't point to any one thing that's really going to tell you who's going to win or lose a mile. You have to kind of take two things in, in combination because so many things can happen in a mile. So in terms of VO2 max, the mile is run at 110 to 112% of current somebody's VO2 max or maximum oxygen use. Um, so that's basically your two mile pace. We already knew that the mile is run faster than the two mile, but this gives you an idea of how much faster, about 10 to 12% faster than a two mile. And the, uh, the mile itself in terms of where the energy is going to be coming from, the three energy systems that come together. The first one, the ATP and the phosphocreatin system, this is your first um, six to seven seconds. And then it also recharges at, um, at sub-maximal velocities within a race. That's how you can have a good kick is 8% of the, the mile. Anaerobic glycolytic, your longer speed system, the one that would eventually produce acid and, and be the limiting factor is 20%. But this is still a distance race. So it is still going to be mostly aerobically based. So 72% of the is the mile from the aerobic system. So just a little bit about Trey Rivers entering this race. He was the number two seed going into this race based on our district meet times, the four districts that come together for this region. But if you were to really look at um, the number, the uh, who had the best times from the season, he had the number four time from season best. So he's going to have the number two on his chest. But based on season best times, he actually had the fourth best time entering this race. Earlier on the same day, he was second in the two mile when he went 925, which was a new PR. Trey is a two mile kid moving down. He likes the distance. He likes cross country better than track. So when you think about how this kid's actually going to be be trained, we were really focusing more on his aerobic side and, and doing what we could to enhance his, his ability to, to use those speed systems. So he's a two miler moving down. His mile PR entering this race was 427, and that was from February. And uh, this race itself was the last week of April, so quite a bit of time had passed since that February PR of 427. His other PRs, just so you have an idea of where he was at this point, his 800 was 202, his 400 was 55.51, and his 5K from his cross-country season was 1552. So let's go ahead and take a look at the race itself. So Trey is going to be this child right here, this young man. Um, and we're going to see how he gets out, and I'll sort of commentate on certain parts and let it play out at other points. So we take four from the four districts, so there's 16 kids in this race itself. As you can see, Trey is right in this general region. He's not at the front, but he's not at the back. He's in the pack. It's not a super, super fast start for anybody and a pretty big pack up at the front. Trey is basically tied for first place. He's just emerging from that pack and he's gonna take the lead at about 200 meters. One thing I really like about how he's running this race, you can see his mechanics are very, very smooth. There's no crazy turnover or anything like that. He's doing it with his long two mile type mechanics. His arms are starting to get a little bit up high, if you can see, especially his right arm. But for, for, for Trey, that's kind of a normal thing that he'll go to. He pretty much has good mechanics in his upper body going through this. So he is going to be in first place through 
the first lap. Got a little bit of a gap on everybody. And actually, the young man who's in second place is the one who beat him in the 3200 meter earlier that day. Still holding on to that lead position. Not too, too much stress. Not super, super fast so far. That first lap was about 67 seconds. So nothing too crazy, obviously, for a regional championship. Very, very highly competitive uh, race field here. The young man who's now trying to take second place is a 15-minute 5K kid. The young man who is in fifth place in the white top is actually the two-time cross-country state champion. So a very, very solid field here. And Trey's got that little bit of a gap on everybody. Again, this is definitely not Trey's best race, but he's really doing a good job of using his strength of the 3,200 meter. This, again, is not really, really super, super fast pace. They're going to come through the second lap. was about 70 seconds, if I remember correctly. Um, so he kind of felt that the fact that this wasn't super, super fast, and he could kind of go to the front and lead. But we'll see what he does here on the third lap that I think is really important for him is as this young man from Steinbrenner High School takes the front, he doesn't panic. He lets other people take the lead. He, he knows that you take more energy by, by holding on to it. And good thing he was sort of toward the front. He didn't get involved in that little collision there. But Trey is one that knows that you can't really – or you really shouldn't try and lead all the way through. It takes more energy to to lead a race than it is to run right behind somebody. So he definitely wants to keep contact. You saw he didn't want to be in third place. He wanted to be in second and tuck right in behind this young man from Steinbrenner High School, um, which is one of our district opponents, and really just keep contact and let this young man do some of the work for him. We're now at 600 meters to go. And the race has sped up just a little bit, but you can still see there's a good group of about eight or so kids that are in front. Um, it's pretty much dipped back down to that first lap pace of about 67 seconds here on this lap three, which is what you want. You want to reverse split it if you're going to run a really good time. So Trey coming through here, he's going to try and put himself in a position if he needed to pass, but there's going to be a little bit of a flurry of passing here right as this lap starts, and there's no panic on his face. No panic in his body mechanics. He just stays where he is. And the decision he makes here at 300 meters is really what separates this young man as a very, very outstanding racer, very, very technically savvy. Makes this move a little bit on the turn, but he waits for the straightaway before he really pushes it here with 300 meters to go. And watch this kick. As he goes, again, we're not dealing with a super, super fast kid. We're only a 55-second 400-meter runner. But when he goes, he never lets up. He just stretches out that field. And look at that, a regional championship. And he's probably got about 25 meters. The young man in second place is actually a 155 kid. And the kid in third place is the one that Trey lost to in the 3,200-meter earlier on this day. When he went for it, he never held back. He just kept on going, kept on going, kept on going, and he ends up crossing the finish line here in 425, a new PR for this regional title. Just outstanding race from start to finish. Did it the way you wanted to. You, you want to reverse split this thing, and we'll talk about it here just a little bit, but as you can see, because he didn't, he, he looks fairly fresher at the end because he didn't give it away too fast. So let's take a look at sort of this race breakdown and what actually happened here. So he was conservative at the first 200. You can't win this thing in the, in the first lap, but you can certainly lose it. He was in that main pack. But he decided to take this lead because the pace wasn't too, too fast. He's, a, again, a, a good two-mile kid. It wasn't in a pace where, I mean, he's obviously running glycolytically. He's developing acid because, as we said, it's over two-mile pace. But it's something that he, he really was able to manage. He knew where he was and, and what he was able to do. So it wasn't too, too fast. So he took that lead at 200 meters and tried to pull everybody with him with his, with his two-mile strength. But what was more important than that is he allowed others to take the lead in the middle, that, that third lap where the young man from Steinbrenner took the lead. And then especially there was a fury of people exchanging that, that first place position as the fourth lap started. He just let it happen, but he kept contact. He never let them get too far away. There was that one point where he didn't want to be in that third position, and he passed a young man on the straightaway, and always passing on the straightaway. This kid was very, very outstanding at doing that, not running extra distance, but he kept that contact, which was really the important thing. And just as importantly, when he started that kick, 
he never looked back. He stayed just under the play, the pace where he was going to have an issue with acid develop, developing until he was ready to give it all away at the very end. He didn't just kind of go at 300 and then let somebody get back into it. He put the hammer down when it was time to go. And part of the reason why he was really able to, as you saw at the end, he didn't look super, super exa- exhausted. He didn't collapse across the finish line was because he was only in that zone for about 300 meters, which a human can go for about 300 meters at that sort of intensity, special endurance one, and still be able to go at the end. So once he kicked, he never let up. So this was the lap breakdown. Like I said, 67 seconds on the first lap. That's not anything crazy. I mean, that's that's not uh, not too too far. Not not super super fast intensity. There's really good runners in this race. It was a little bit more of a tactical race. Lap two slowed down even more. That's 440 pace. Most of the kids in this field can easily go under 440 at any any point. But then it becomes a reverse split race, which is exactly what you would want from, from somebody trying to get a new PR and, and to run it really tactically correctly. Goes 67 on lap 3, not leading um, for most of it. Lap 4, 59 seconds from a kid whose PR is 55.5 at this point. Probably if he had run a... a, a actual 400 meters in a meet he probably would have been about 53 at this point in fact in the summer of this training year he ended up going 53 32 so the idea being is your your final kick in in a mile can probably be about six to seven seconds off your true 400 meter kick if you're really in in shape aerobically and anaerobically but that's really how this kid did it He, he did everything right in this race, you know, conservative at the at, at the front, taking the lead when you know it's it's not a super fast pace, allowing other people to do the work in the middle, and and, and really just just putting the hammer down when you need to. So we'll do a couple other race breakdowns from from Trey. He's just he's just a fantastic runner and in, in his race strategy and everything in the in the coming weeks here. Um, if you like this video, especially the fact that it's a departure from the way I normally do it, um, please maybe give it a like or subscribe to the channel or leave a comment down below if maybe you saw something that uh, that I didn't mention in this video. And until next time, this has been Coachy TV.